I am with the legend Moses West right here, right in front of one of his great machines, and it is making water right now. <laughs> yep, and this is the machine that we're going to use to actually take diesel yep. that you produce, and we're going to actually show you turn that diesel into water. Yep. Yep. We're Plastic into show water. <laughs> Plastic into water. We're actually going to show it happening, the process of this machine running that generator, running the generator back here on the diesel that Julian produces, and we are going to make water with that. So yes, sir. all around the world, what you can do is you can take plastic, recycle that plastic into a fuel, and turn it into water that people can drink. And we all know that there's no shortage of plastic in the world. Yep, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Does your family falsely claim to be Native American? Mine too. My Southern family has always said that we're Cherokee, but my DNA results suggest otherwise. When I was looking up my fourth great grandmother, Millie, who lived in Georgia, I found a document referencing the Cherokee Land Lottery of 1832, and I thought, oh, maybe finally a connection to the Cherokee people. And it's a connection, but not a good one. The Cherokee Land Lottery of 1832 gave land from the Cherokee people directly to white settlers, and my fourth great-grandmother was one of the people that got land in that lottery. And that lottery helped kick off the Trail of Tears, which not only displaced Native people, but um, often killed them in the process. So we do have a connection to the Cherokee people, but certainly not the one we thought. But I'm a big believer in sharing the truth, um, even when it's ugly. And I don't think my grandma had any idea when she was telling us that we were Cherokee. I can't solve the problem. You guys pull the strings at closed schools. You guys draw the boundaries that keep our kids restricted to the ghetto. You guys write up the restrictive covenants that keep us out of houses. So it's up to you to talk to your brothers and your sisters and persuade them that they have a responsibility. We've assumed ours for over 400 years, and we're tired of this kind of stuff now. We're not going to suffer patiently anymore. No more turning the other cheek. No more blessing our enemies. No more praying for those who despitefully use us. We're going to show you that we've learned the lesson you've taught us we've studied your history and you did not take over this country by singing we shall overcome you did not gain control of the world like you have it now by dealing fairly with a man and keeping your word you're treaty breakers you're liars you're thieves you rape entire continents and races of people then you wonder why these very people don't have any confidence or trust in you your religion means nothing your law is a farce and we see it every day you demonstrated it in Alabama and I can say you because you're part of the whole system. You profit from it. In fact, you make your living from it. You could walk around and talk to people, stand up in your pulpit on Sunday and preach nice little songs and say, now we're going to give thanks to the Lord for he is good and old Jesus be among us. As far as we're concerned, your Jesus is contaminated, just like everything else you've tried to force upon us is contaminated. Mm -hmm. well, so you uh, can have him. And here's what I'll say. I wish you would follow Jesus like we followed him. Because if you did that, then we'd be in charge tomorrow. I think the problem is so bad that we can have no understanding at all. You think it's gotten to the point where there can never be that reconciliation? Then? No. You talk about justice, and it means one thing to you, and we talk about it, and it means something else to us. Mm -hmm. And it'll always be that way. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd like you to know I have a terrible feeling against preachers because I think you guys are the ones who are largely responsible for the problem in the first place. And you can accept it or not any way you choose. And for you, this may be an excursion, you know, in, what, across what, the what line. What about the person that wants to listen? I genuinely feel that I want to listen. Well, if you listen and try to do something, you get kicked out of your church. See, that's, that's the way your people are. Well, we can make changes. Right? I mean, so the changes that have come have been drastic. God bless you, little brother. Come back and see us again sometime. He's not, the Negro is not a part of my family. As a result, I don't elect to have him sit and eat with me. As a result, I don't elect to have him belong to a club that I may belong to. I, I don't elect to... Be for Judge Obar, as for most Southern whites, out of the past has come a philosophy he calls the Southern way of life. The Negro and his place is at the heart of it. This is the way it has been. It's the history of the South. It's because we've been brought up like this. 
we have been taught like this, and we teach our children like this, and they'll teach their children like that. I think it is a matter that has been history all down through the years and will remain history. Well, I guess it's just plain born in us, instilled in us, um, there, in spite of the fact that you have great respect for some Negro individuals, respect them as people, and not just as a servant. Um, there is some physical revulsion, I think, it, the, the, the skin is dark. And I guess it's just something that we are so um, familiar with, it, it's just impossible, really, to overcome it. For 11 million Negroes in the South, there is also a Southern way of life. But rarely have they been asked for their interpretation. Well, uh, the white man fears this, that if the Negro get equal education, then he will be out of his reach for to do the job that he year before had done for him, and he figured that uh, he was going to have to pay the Negro equal salary, that he would have to pay the other boy which actually is not the skin of the Negro that the white man dreads. It's the Negro is going to demand the dollar that the white man demands. Uh, the Southern way of life for the uh, Negro woman means that uh, she is addressed all the time by her first name, or she's called Auntie, or she's called Girl by the... Uh, other race and the southern way of life often means that our children wear some of the things that have been uh, given by others now a lot of times these are good things and they are highly appreciated and the southern way of life means that you can uh, purchase food from a side entrance or a back entrance What's going on, B1 Famous? And shout out to our sister, Marsha Bogus. This is the year of reckoning. Everything's being revealed. Now that I've heard her say these things she's about to say, I can hear her voice. Tap in. This is why you can't trust anything in Hollywood. I trust that y'all remember the 2002 hit by Justin Timberlake, Cry Me a River. Yeah, okay. You remember this part? Well, Marsha Ambrosius was on the Terrell show and revealed that that is her voice. But years later, they will find out that that part was actually me. The very R&B falsetto that we hear is her. Cry me, cry me. And now I just don't trust anybody. It just feels like the lies and deceit just, they just keep coming out. Please respect my privacy. B1 family, if you are on IG, follow our brother Hawk Newsom. That's the brother in this next clip calling Eric Adams out. If you're on TikTok, follow my bro, Petty Sam. He's the one who brought, uh, went back and got the information on this, quote, elder, really an older, who was scamming and scheming. And y'all know who these people are. they part of the Congressional Black Talkers and all those other individuals that have done nothing for black folk, but everything for immigrants. Be one. Your policies are anti-black. You are a disgrace to all black people in this city. The things that you have done are unconscionable. You hurt our schools. Our streets are dirty. Our children are harassed by the police. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You can shut me all you want, but the people are with us. We are going to be here. We are, we're going to be here. I'm sorry, Mother Drew. Hey, uh, brother, this is a 92-year-old elder. Show us some respect. Wait a minute. Y'all don't know who this old crusty thief is? Birds of a feather. Hazel Dukes, the head of the New York chapter of the NAACP, has been removed from the organization's national board. Last October, Dukes admitted she misappropriated about $13,000 from a cancer victim who trusted Dukes to handle her finances. The 65-year-old civil rights veteran was ousted yesterday during a meeting of the National Board in Chicago. It took a two-thirds vote among the board members to kick Dukes out. Bro, so why did I think that Tut was just the language that we made up in middle school? My friend Anise taught everybody how to speak Tut, and we've been speaking it for like 20, tw about 22 years now. And anytime we're in public, we only speak in Tut because nobody else can understand. 
But whole time, I'm finding out that Tetanese is a real language that's widely spoken across the Americas in different regions. And while people speak Tut differently, like how we speak Tut here in Southern California, in Englewood, California, is differently from how some of the other people I've been going through the videos, but I'm like, I can still completely understand exactly what they're saying, but they speak Tut differently. Like there's, it's a different way that they apply. Um the language but you can understand if you speak any form of tut i think you can understand any form of tut because it's kind of similar to understanding african-american vernacular how people speak um a v e in southern california versus norcal versus um different parts of the east coast versus the south if you're having a conversation and you're a black person you can understand what they're saying for the most part even though you have different dialects. I just think that that's so cool. And this entire time, I thought that this is just some language that was made up in middle school by my friends. <laughs> and it's a real language. I love it. All right, family, I'm sharing these snippets and these, just to let y'all know there's creators you can go to and follow. And if you're having a hard time learning it or how to pronounce certain things and want to, you know, Start building up your lingo and repertoire in Tut. You can go follow them. I'm not going to share a whole bunch. I don't want this out in the algorithm like that because we want to keep it amongst ourselves. I can't stand for no bitch to come around me trying to call me a cis woman. I'm just a woman, period. Born and motherfucking raised. Stop trying to force all them labels and shit like that. We're not doing that shit over here. And then the craziest thing when they be trying to gaslight you into being called just some shit you don't want to be called. Motherfuckers want respect, but don't give it. You want somebody to respect your pronouns, but you run around here calling me a cis woman when I've asked you to just call me a woman, period. Ain't shit cis about it. You know, the elders told me, and I had to learn the hard way. And so I'm telling you so that you don't have to learn the hard way. Stop mixed breeding with these fucking Caucasians. Stop mixed breeding with these Europeans. Do you get it? Okay, because I don't want to have to use my man's voice again, okay? And so the elders had to let me know. I don't care if it seems like the easy way out, it's not worth it because they have so much karma attached to them. And to think about it, if they get custody of your children, how are your children gonna be treated? Look at the stories that have been told on the internet. How mixed children have been treated by their white oppressor, white oppressing parents. So think about it. If they're gonna win the judicial system, I mean, why wouldn't they be able to take custody of your child? And get full custody and you're left with partial if that if that and so how is your child going to be t raised taught treated you're creating a bed you know how grandma used to grandpa used to always say you made your bed you now you need to lie in it okay you're creating your bed you're creating your legacy. You're creating your future to your children being mistreated by oppressors. Is it fucking worth it for the what? The bling, the clothes, the status? What the fuck? Is it like you can go to South America and live life as a king? There are so many parts of the world you can live in where you can live status as a king stocks you can learn how to become a day trader you can learn how to become an e-wholesaler in real estate with anything pre foreclosures anything you can learn software engineering you can learn e-coding like there's so many different avenues that you can take where it doesn't require a college degree just a trade skill your time you isolated alone 
so that you can focus on becoming the best version of yourself. You gotta put yourself first so that you can help others. You cannot do it the other way around. And if you don't do this for yourself, you're gonna fuck your children. And you're gonna fuck yourself by the karma that's gonna be attached to you breeding with Caucasians and Europeans, AKA white people. Go ahead, breed with that pink box. I forbid you, I forbid you go elsewhere. To be one family, even though we are starting to delineate and we're getting these tethers out of the mix, we still have in-home problems that we have to deal with. We can't sleep on these. I know it's a lot to have ourselves dealing with the war on multiple fronts, but we got to stay vigilant. We got to stay certified because these weirdos get around our kids and they mess our children up. And I'm really big about that. I got three children of my own. Many of you have children, nephews, nieces, so forth and so on. So lock in and stay on code and stay on point and watch your surroundings. And all because somebody's quote family doesn't mean they're good for you. Y'all remember that Cheryl Coach was accused of essay and her students and the pop back up on TikTok, cutting her hair to gossip used to talk about new beginnings and people was like, oh, they can never make me hate you under her comments. Well, she was indicted the other day. So according to the indictment, Audrey Cobb Williams is facing two counts of first degree sexual contact by an employer or agent. She's, they said that while she was an employee at Monroe High School, she didn't knowingly kiss a student, didn't knowingly perform a sexual act with a student whom accused no. So she knew, was enrolled as a student contrary to the laws of the state. Improper sexual contact by an employee, agent, or foster parent, consent, not a defense. And let me tell you something. Okay, since I know most of y'all share half a brain cell. Consent is a defense since children cannot consent to being essayed by adults. Uh, students cannot consent to being essayed by their teacher. So the next step after the grand jury indictment is for this case to go to trial. And if convicted, she does face up to 10 years in prison for each count. Now, let me go ahead and address them half a brain cell crew. Yes, the people that told me the charges was dismissed, the case was dropped, the boy consented. I need to watch my back. I'm watching my back to see if y'all gonna come up to the front and hold your babe accountable or, or not, probably, right? Because she reading the Bible and praise dancing like this. Talk about new beginnings. No, baby, she's using religion to manipulate y'all into thinking that she has changed after using her position of power to essay a student. But that's acceptable for y'all because y'all share half a brain cell. And if y'all would have spent, okay, just a fraction of the time that y'all spent defending her actually researching this case, y'all would know that the things that she is being accused of were actually things that she was being accused of. So this indictment shouldn't come as a surprise. But for most of the half a brain cell crew or big bold letters, Screw, it probably does come as a surprise because you guys are more willing to listen to the word of your faith, somebody that is again accused of committing a heinous crime than actually doing your own research. And now it's going to go from the charges to drop, I don't know what I'm talking about, to she's innocent until proven guilty. They could never make me hate her. Somebody essaying a child and using their position of power as a coach to essay a child doesn't make you hate them. Maybe that says more about you than it'll ever say about any of us that are only here covering this case in the fucking first place. It says that no matter what somebody does, as long as you like them, it's going to be okay. As long as they can read the Bible and go to church and dance and all white, it's going to be okay. Maybe you ain't fooling that narrow one of us. Hey. You guys do? Nigga, I'm straight. They okay. You straight, nigga? I didn't say that. Excuse me, bro. I come yeah, from, don't I, do that I, to I, me, I, brother. Okay, I, I appreciate from, That's where I come from, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I, I was in a black culture gang, bro. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. But when it comes to me, I don't... Okay, I mean, fair enough. But with your friends, you fair do enough. you. Fair enough, brother. Yep. There's very little I actually find insulting. One of the things I do find insulting is the fact that your mother had four inside-the-mouth skin, and now we are subject to these weird internet comments that you decide to leave everywhere like pieces of shit in my yard find it insulting that you think that projecting your racism by faking outrage on behalf of black people is an effective trolling tactic. And lastly, I find it insulting that you're poorly trolling from a faceless, contentless account. Um, I quote the great full force when I say, I smell pussy. Chapel's video is just confirmation for me that even the most progressive white ladies even those that are queer, still have so much privilege and can be so unsafe to be around. So I'm not shocked by what she said, just more kind of like, you can't see anybody but yourself. You can't see the harm that you just did to me, a black creator, queer creator. You don't see any of the black people in my comment section. You are only here 
to condescend to black people and task them, the victims, with solving white supremacy, which you're doing. Things we disagree about. I don't believe in white supremacy. You like to perpetuate white supremacy. I was talking about how I don't feel um, safe with white people. You seem to disagree with that, which is weird because it's my own experience. And then also there is no conversation to be had when someone is talking about the unsafety they feel for you, the perpetrator, to come ask the victim to have a conversation with you. This is sick shit. This is sick. Do you not find it odd that the man who was executed in Missouri yesterday was in prison for unaliving a reporter who was at the time looking into the current governor of Missouri, Michael Lynn Parson. Yeah, Michael Lynn Parson, the one person who could have easily saved the life of Marcellus Williams. Well, back in the day, it was alleged that he may have been selling bad gasoline that hurt a lot of people. That's how he got rich. And just so you know, Michael Lynn Parson is the same guy who pardoned Tweedledee and Tweedledumass when they attempted to shoot pew, pew protesters during the George Floyd protests. Emphasis on tried. I'm just pointing this out because it could be ascertained that the one person who had the most power in this situation is the one person who had the most to gain from both unalivings of Felicia Gale and Marcellus Williams. And one could ascertain that somebody should probably investigate that. Yeah. This is insane. 158 Democrats voted against Violence Against Women by Illegal Aliens Act. Basically, this act says any illegal person who is convicted sexual assault, domestic violence, anything done with little kids, you will be declined citizenship to this country. Let me repeat what I just said. Any illegal person who commits this crime will not be permitted into this state. And you're probably sitting there asking me, why do I say the Democrats do not like women? Well, there was a vote for this and it passed. It passed. Thank God it passed. But as you can see right there, 266 people said yes. 158 people said no. 158 people. Do you want to know the number of Republicans said no? Zero. Do you want to know the number of Democrats that said yes? 51. Do you want to know how much said no? 158. Out of 211 seats, 158 of them selected no. So that means they have a woman president currently trying to run the United States. I mean, she's basically running the United States right now because where's our president right now? She's the vice president. If our president is incompetent or sick or something, God forbid, something happens to him, she is up next. And we haven't heard from our president in like almost two and a half months. And as a woman running for president, there's a bill like this and you're letting your party, you're letting your party say no. 158 people in your party said no. That's sick. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people talking about, oh, no, that's a lie, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're just making stuff up. Let me show you this video. I just ended up showing the picture instead. But look, Republicans, 215 of them said, yes, let's pass it. The five that's, that wasn't voting, you're kind of weird for that. I ain't gonna lie. You're kind of weird for that. Look at the Democratic Party. 51 of them said, yes, let's pass that law. 158 said no. And the other two that's not voting, you're still weird. You're part of the 158. Well, basically, it's 160. Wow. This 
is the party that's running off of we must save women. We must save women's rep- reproductive rights and whatnot. So y'all don't care what happens to the women? Why are these illegals, why are these illegals having all this power? That's what I'm trying to understand. So basically, they come from wherever the hell they come from, and they're going to come here, live however the hell they want, break whatever rules they want, because they're most definitely not going to jail. They're getting paid every month. Then I remember when the black folks were asking for reparations, they said, nah, we don't have that. We can't do that. But all the illegals that are coming in, how much money are you giving them? Oh, man. That's sick. It ain't been a good damn hour, and we already found out. The culprit that was in charge of this is the one that got it on his chest. Huh? It ain't been a good damn hour, and the one we sitting up here trying to protect is the one that came up with the plot because he got kicked off the swimming team. Huh? You got me up here raising my goddamn voice. Huh? Acting up in front of all these people. And you the one who came with the idea because your ass couldn't run a, a goddamn four flat in the 40? Huh? Come on now. Damn ridiculous. Got me up here talking to these people, trying to get on their case, and people start tagging me. Sending me the people pages. Oh, bro, we got to do homework. Come on, let's get on it. Well, we actually got up on it. And your ass the culprit. Huh? Come to find out. Not only did you get kicked off, you came up with the plot and sat around with the boys and said, listen, this is what y'all going to do. So not only is you the victim, per se, you the goddamn uh, chemistry. You the chemist. You Dr. Jekyll, huh? Mr. High, huh? Oh, God damn it. Be advised, the last video, it was us, y'all. I'm just a messenger. Now, family, I did show the last one. I speak, speaking on this situation. And this brother saying something different. I'm going to keep an eye on this. And anytime new information, valid, solid information presents itself, I'm going to share with the family so we can stay abreast of what's true. Now, I did look and try to find the name or picture of the young man. Couldn't find that. They're keeping it in wraps. So that's kind of a red flag for me. I think I think Buddy might be non-FBA because I don't see any of our children being so desperate as to not just go to a different swim team. Not to have nobody cut nothing to their chest. All right. Hey, Libs. Let's talk. Who was surprised by Janet Jackson's statement? When the last time Janet Jackson had a black experience in America, let alone a real job? This woman being rich and famous most of her life. She had the luxury of only dealing with her problems and her trauma and her... See, because what we're not about to do is that. We're not about to question how black Janet Jackson is. Just because she said something that made you uncomfortable? Liberals. Oh, God. But what the fuck did she say? Amid backlash toward Janet Jackson's ignorant remarks about Kamala Harris's phrase, Whoopi Goldberg jumped to her defense. Janet is not a political animal, Whoopi said in response to backlash over the singer echoing false claims about Kamala Harris's race. Janet Jackson said that she had heard that Kamala is not black and that she's Indian. When the interviewer informed Janet of Kamala's biracial identity, the singer falsely stated her father's white. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't watched the news in a few days. I was told that they discovered her father was white. Janet's comments were branded ignorant and disappointing by several internet users. I'm guessing liberals, and now Whoopi Goldberg has jumped to her defense. Well, let me go on ahead and do that too. Because what we're not gonna do is come for Miss Jackson. Janet Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Because she's not into the news and the politics like y'all are. She heard something, she repeated it. Move the fuck on. But wait, there's more. Child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident, and that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Jackson gave a wave when he was released after booking. He's scheduled for arraignment in January. Michael's been a longtime resident of Trump Tower, and last night the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King by going after the accuser's mother. 
She's had plenty of experience at going after people. And she goes after them viciously and violently. And I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done. And I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when the indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. It's, tu it's tough. It's tough to win. But I have a feeling he's going to win, Larry. The interesting thing is I know Michael from many different standpoints. And Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids. And at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago and even at Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester. Kamala Mamala, you came for MJ? And you want my vote on game day? Bitch. Trump has two votes from the House of Spike. That's me and my husband. The fuck? Voting for Kamala after this tragedy ass interview, you can officially call yourself an NPC player. If she brings up her mama and her sister one more fucking time in the interview, I'm a John Q losing. I don't give a fuck about your mama and your sister. They ain't paying none of our bills. They ain't getting us out of inflation. What the fuck is your intentions if you are elected president? That's the problem. She never gives policies. It's always speaking points with her. Let's speak about this. Let's speak about this. No! We don't want no more fucking talking. We don't want no more speaking. I'm not a fan of fucking Oprah, but even this dried up grapefruit looking motherfucker was amazed on what the hell she was talking about. If a robber robbed me, I'm gonna shoot him with my gun. Girl, you know you a Democrat and you just said that? All the liberal women that were surrounding, they just clapping. Woo! They don't give a fuck about nobody. All they give a fuck about is women's rights. What are you talking about? What rights do you all not have in 2024 in this fucking country? You all have the same rights as me, as any other race in this country. This is a shame. Why come they just, they, why come they just won't drop out? Why come they just want to say, you know what, we throw in the towel, Trump, you take it for the next four years. We're not going to procrastinate no more. Fucking people are stubborn, man. They won't quit. You motherfuckers lost. You lost. I don't even understand what the fuck is the agenda with these people anymore. I just don't. Most of her donors are backing out. The Teamsters has backed out. Not even her own people, her own party is taking this shit serious. Why come they just won't stop and pass the fucking torch to Trump? He's our only other option. Fuck, man. Shit, it's mind-boggling, man. It's mind-boggling. Black people were worth more back in the 60s, back in the 50s, than we worth today. So what am I talking about? First of all, if you're not easily offended, I need you to stick around and listen to all of this. In 1968, Dr. King, in his last speech, said that the collective income of the Negro, the combined income of the Negro, was more than $30.63 billion a year, which at the time was more than all of the exports of the United States and more than all of the national budget of Canada. After you left the United States, Soviet Russia, France, and a couple other countries, the American Negro collectively was richer than all of the nations of the world, with the exception of nine. Dr. King told black men how to lead, but we didn't Listen, Dr. King said, we just need to go around to these stores and say, God sent us by here to say to you, you're not treating his children right. And to make the first item on your agenda, fair treatment economically, where all of God's children are concerned. And if you're not prepared to do that, we have an agenda that we must follow. And that agenda calls for withdrawing economic support from you. But see, black men still want the white man to freedom. Integration was not the problem. We were the problem. Integration wasn't the destruction of the black community. Dr. King never, ever told us that integration was the end goal. Integration was the starting line because in the same speech I just quoted from, I've been to the mountaintop. He also said, we need to be, we need to strengthen black institutions. Go out and tell them not to buy hearts uh, bread. Go out and tell them not to buy wonder bread. What we need to do is strengthen black insurance companies, strengthen black banking. This is what he told us to do. And he also said this, in order for the Negro to be free, he must move down deep into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with pen and ink of self-asserted manhood his own emancipation proclamation. But the black man don't want to set himself free. The black man is still psychologically seeking approval from his white slave master. 
Period. Point blank. End of story. No one wants to admit this. No one wants to be open about this, but I'll say it and I'm going to stand behind it. This is why so many black men are suckers for the Democratic Party. This is why so many black women are suckers for the Democratic Party, because let's be honest, I don't care what happens to us. I don't care what we do. Women follow the lead of men, even if they lead them to hell. That's how much black women love black men. Even if they're being led straight to hell, they're going to try their damnedest to, to, pull, to pull them away from the road that they're walking on while still walking with them themselves. I got a question for you. Y'all woke up yet? Y'all realize, are y'all going to realize that no government institution is going to save you? Are y'all going to realize that nobody anywhere is going to save you other than your damn self? Because if you don't realize that, if we don't realize that we don't, if we don't wake up, ain't nothing going to change up. We're going to be having these same damn conversations for generations if we even have generations of black folks left because we projected to hit a zero net worth by 2050. Wake up, smell the coffee, change the game. Judy. One thing I know for certain is Kamala never in a million years thought that anyone would do their homework about what she's written in her book or about what she said ever. But today, today, Candace... 10,000% read her all the way down to the ground and went into a full-blown deep dive. And I know Kamala got to be shaking in her boots because truth be told, black women were Kamala's target audience and her only saving grace. Because in mass, no one else was even thinking about voting for her for real, like in mass, no one else. And now that we are seeing, not we, because I was never on her train, but now, since the mass amounts of black women are coming out and being like, no, you've lied about this, you lied about that, you do not have the black community at the forefront of your campaign and you're not gonna do anything for the black community, per her words. And at the end of the day, black women really have been carrying the black community on, those sh on their shoulders for a very long time. And we don't want to anymore. And under democratic laws and local governments, that's where we've been and we no longer want to do that it's over like no one sh none of us should be voting for people based on their skin color or based on the fact that oh well trump is racist so what so has allegedly so has every other president before him been so if he is so what and so is she allegedly so what are, what, are we, what are we talking about? We gotta stop being so emotional and look at what's right in front of our face. We got, we got to look at what's right in front of our face, no matter what they look like, no matter what the media is saying, because we know who's in charge of all the media, right? So whoever they're boosting out in front of the media is gonna serve their agenda. And we know who controls the media, correct? Okay, I don't have to say it, okay. But baby, it's over. And I believe that the people that's controlling everything, war, banks, media, all the industries, I believe they know it and they see it. And I think, allegedly, that is why they have committed to poking the bear. And you know who the bear is, okay? It's that bear over there in Russia, but that bear. And, um the only way to keep this regime in the office is by starting a war they're poking the bear y'all and i'm just hoping and praying that the bear does not bite just please let it ride until elections we got about one month let it ride you're it's this is gonna be crazy but y'all at this point, I don't think people in real life are voting for Kamala. For the most part, I don't think people in like real life are voting for her. I think it's all media boosting to make it seem like there's all these people on her side when in, indeed, no. Allegedly. <laughs> now, if you know about consciously, you know this Negro toes the line for the Democrats. He shields a lot. And he's one of those cats that got to use his degree and he used the TikTok platform to make himself viable. Which I hate, no, you know, get your money. But when you told the line, you try to speak up for black issues and try to do what Dems always do, talk crazy to us, talk down on us, cuss out, call us all kind of stupid and dumb, and your chickens come home to roost, listen to this young sister and listen to the 
passion and the rage in her voice as she checks this clown. Second time effing this over at my organization. It's almost like she's saying because I didn't- You are so performative, weird, and disingenuous. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Last year, when I reached out asking for your help to raise money for another black man who had been exonerated off a of death row, and you said, yeah, I'll make a video. I sent all his information, texting my bosses. We got so excited. Low key was telling him like, hey, you finna come into some money. Like he got millions of followers. You gonna come into some pay. You didn't post shit. I hit you up again. I know you a busy man following up. You didn't say shit after that. You come back. I'll share it in my Twitter now. I had to look for it, but you finally posted this funky ass GoFundMe link. You couldn't even dignify and give people context as to who he is and why we're supporting him when you're so radical, rah, rah, rah. This is an innocent black man that sat on death row for 25 years, didn't get a dime, got released, had financial struggles. We trying to get him some paper on his 20th exoneration anniversary. You're weird. But anyways, y'all, this is Mr. Joseph Amrine. He was an innocent black man who was sentenced to death in the 1980s. He got released in 2003. Last year was his 20th exoneration anniversary. We had a whole shindig for him. We were trying to raise $20,000. We couldn't raise that exactly. If y'all could blow this up to the moon and change this man's life, I would greatly appreciate it, y'all. If y'all could share this, I don't give a fuck about the consciously. I don't care about none of that. Please share this. Blow this up to the moon. Elon, whoever, if anybody rich watching this, please donate to this man, his cause. He's such a humble, kind spirit. He deserves it. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, we stuck on Diddy and all of that. But at the same time, they are meeting today, the UN and the World Health Organization. And many of you that have any understanding about the World Health Organization, that's the ones that's when a pandemic happens, they're the ones that do most of the speaking about it, okay? Well, today, from my understanding, they're supposed to be going in there looking over different deals or whatnot to give them more power over the people when it comes to a pandemic. And y'all know as well as I do, that's something we do not want or need in this country, in the world, period. Because it basically gives them the strength to, I don't know your kids in school, and they say some pandemic or whatever, they don't need to ask us for permission to jab our children. They will literally be able to do it for themselves. And if they figure you're in your home and they think you have something and you don't want to get jabbed, it'll give them the right to take you from your home. And I'm pleading with the, the ones that don't like Trump. And, and I see people on here don't even have a reason for it, but please understand me when I say this. This is very serious to our sovereignty, our freedom as Americans and as human beings. We have to stop with this hate divide BS and look at what's going on. Why do you think they're pushing all these things now before Trump's say he gets in office? Because they know what he's going in there to do. He's going to stop these things. Y'all, don't y'all understand this? Please listen, and I'm just saying this for people to really wake up, man, and see what's going on for yourself. Look it up. Don't, listen, don't allow these people to distract you, to mind fuck you. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to disrespect people because you know I don't curse, but this is something I really need to get out there because it's important. I'm tired of speaking until I can't speak anymore, trying to convince the people, forget convince trying to get the people to look at everything for what it really is and stop with the following the crowd or stop with the I just hate this person and actually say to yourself hold on let me really see what's going on because all of our futures is at stake if we don't make the right choice and say for instance Trump gets in office I don't believe none of the stuff they're trying to tell us he's going to do bad for the people I look at what he's done in those four years and they say he's a racist. But honestly, what worse when he was in office happened compared to what's happening now? We can't even live anymore, man. There are more homeless people. Man, I'm watching little kids out there standing on the streets with a water and, and, and Gatorade trying to make money for their families, man. 
This ain't nothing I'm used to seeing, and this is not something I know none of y'all want to see for the next 10, 15, 20 years. We got to wake up, man, and, and actually think and say, you know what? Maybe those people do have something. Maybe they right. Let's start looking into it so we can actually go the right direction, man. It ain't about Trump. If it was another man, it could have been Mickey the Mouse. But if he was spitting the same things that Trump is putting out there for the people and he was doing the same thing that I know Trump is going to do to help this country, then I'm going to vote Mickey Mouse ass in the, into uh, to the uh, White House. But it's Trump. And yes, I'm going to put my vote in. I got to, man. And so I'm telling all the Trump supporters, get out there, get your vote in. And Kamala Harris supporters, please do me one favor. Just look at everything for what it is. Let's not make a mistake that's going to jeopardize every one of our futures. TikTok, this beautiful black queen needs our help. Let me pitch myself down to a little guy. First, I want to say, white men stole her land, but let me tell you how they did it. Sad, but true. This beautiful black queen has 10 children she's taking care of. She lived in New York. She bought some property, some land in Carolina. She hired this company to build a four-bedroom modular home for her. Down East Homes in Carolina. She decided to have a home built on her land, and she used this company. She wanted a four-bedroom modular for her and her 10 kids, which they were going to add on to um, later on. So they had additional things. She had a specific type of house that she wanted. Her and the company ended up not seeing eye to eye, so she tells the company, you know what, I'm just going to move forward, and I'm going to go on with another company and I'm gonna find a different person. Now I told you, she lives in New York, so she don't get she don't have eyes on her property. But what does the white man do that owns this company? Let me tell you. They had a random house laying around and they went and dropped it on her property. It wasn't nothing like the house she wanted. It was just a random house that they dropped on her property because they knew what they were doing. Let me tell you what they did. She told them to get this off her property, off her land. She do not want their property on her land. And why did y'all bring this house over here? They did it so that they could end up putting a lien on her property. And then she's going to default and they're going to give this land to this white man who did this on purpose because this is a practice that they know how to do and how to get people out of their land. She contacted them and asked them to move this house off of her property. But because they got money and they team up with all the judges and lawyers in their neighborhood and in their uh, county, they have gotten in all the judges' ears, and now none of them, none of them is fooling with this black woman. They are all on the side of the white man, and they're about to give this man her land if they haven't done it already. Because they knew if they drop the house on their property and she don't pay for it, when she said she didn't want that house, that they would be able to call their friends and get a lien on the land and just take her land. Down East Homes in Carolina, y'all got some explaining to do. Constance Washington is this beautiful black queen, and she needs our help. She needs a lawyer, a good, good, good lawyer. A civil rights lawyer. So if y'all know any civil rights lawyer that can practice in Carolina, please have them contact this beautiful black queen, Constance Washington. Let me know what y'all think. Let us know if y'all know any good lawyers that can help her out, any good civil rights lawyers, because all these judges and these attorneys out there are in cahoots with these landowners, with these property owners, or should I say land thieves. Now, shout out to this African sister who calls out Africans to a, to a degree, right? Because if you listen, there's moments in whenever where she kind of, she pulls back and she doesn't go all in because she's like, I'm not going to put y'all on black so I don't want to mess up your money. Here's the problem, black family, my black sisters. Your money has a purpose, has a use, it means something. Her not want to call out is her getting on code to an extent with her group because her speaking out about this she ain't supposed to do that. But we appreciate her. That's she's told a lot, so I wouldn't say she's necessarily an ally, but she's not fully a tether, right? She's kind of in the middle, which is still not a good thing to be. Either you let your yays be your yays and your nays be your nays. However, this should wake y'all up when y'all going in here and they doing all this talking in French and 
French Creole and and uh, all these other different African languages or whatever, have your ears up. Like notice the mannerisms, the gestures. They are finessing y'all. Be careful, ladies. I'm just gonna give your money away. All right, but tap in. Listen, to the host. It's a, it's like seven minutes, but it's worth it. You know what? Right is right and wrong is wrong. Okay. Now, y'all need to really be careful with going to these hair braiders. I'm African to the core. I will always respect my people. Always respect where I'm from. But also, these hair braiding salons need to understand that you make your money off of majority American women. Like, you're in America. You make your money here. So for y'all to be sitting there talking shit about people, saying whatever you want to say about people, and thinking... Oh, they won't understand so I could talk my shit and then smile in, in their face and overcharge them. Meanwhile, y'all talking mad shit in French and other African languages. Like, you never know who understands shit. Like, the shit y'all saying. I go into this Dee Dee's hair braiding in Newark, New Jersey. Okay? And I speak full-blown. Speak, write, understand French. Now, I don't sound like I speak French. I sound American. I look American american if you will right whatever so i come in there i'm trying to decide what i want to do i'm trying to figure out what i want to do right with my hair i was stuck between cornrows knotless braids and then like my like the boho knotless and i have like the hair for the boho knotless so i come in there and i'm like oh you know do you know how to do cornrows everybody doesn't know how to do cornrows she like yeah i know how to do it i and i show her picture on the instagram she's like yeah i did that one of the girls is like yeah i did that i'm like oh you did this she's like yeah hmm i'm like okay while i'm asking this she's saying in french to the other lady oh i didn't do it but whatever she doesn't need to know that i don't even like doing corn i don't even know how to do cornrows but i'm gonna do whatever on her head so i'm like all right you know what i came all the way over here she doesn't know how to do this let me switch the style because she doesn't know that i understand what the fuck she's saying so i'm like okay let me do knotless braids right i'm like okay let me do knotless she's like do you want butt length or waist length i'm like i've shown her where i want it she's like oh that's butt length i'm like no that's more so waist length i'm pointing to my waist like i'm pointing to right here she's like no you like that's butt length i'm like all right fine i'll do butt length she's like okay she's finishing up her little sister whoever's hair she's doing that's obviously not paying then the lady another lady comes to her and goes oh what ha what's happening she's like oh she wants um waistland but i'm gonna charge her butt butt length the lady's like oh do a waistland 200 dollars and she's just like and i and she says waist length in english so she's like mixing english with french she says waist length in english so i'm like no 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 like i thought you said you're gonna do a butt length she's like oh don't worry about her i'm gonna do a butt length and the lady's like no make sure you 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 you, you do it to the waist and she's like in french i will she doesn't know she doesn't have to know oh these american people are they they stupid this she's legit saying this shit mind you this other lady is sitting down doing her braids an older lady and the lady's talking mad shit like, oh, her hair looks crazy. Oh, you didn't, telling the braider, you didn't even do it right. It's big in the front, but she won't even know. Like, cause she's old, so she won't even know. And the picture she showed us doesn't even look nice. So at least if she tries to fight it, we can say, oh, the picture. Like planning a whole scenario when the lady's not gonna like her hair in the end. And the lady's so nice, like, oh, like, you know, this is, you know, speaking to them, trying to be all polite like another girl's in the chair doing her hair and she's like oh like the the hair that she brought is horrible look at her hair just talking mad shit yo at some point i was just fed the fuck up and i and then she's like oh while i'm like looking through to to see if i really want to do the knot list because i'm looking at the styles that they've done on their instagram the lady's like oh what is she deciding like is she gonna do it oh these people are crazy they always coming in here and we gonna do what we want every time like they're crazy blah 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 look at her hair bitch look at your fucking hair I, I was fed up like i was to hear i just let that shit out i was like you really gonna sit here and talk about me and this is me in french like like you think i don't speak french miss like be careful what the fuck you say and be careful who the fuck you talking about because i would have really went in on you and I really could have went in on you and told every single customer here what the fuck y'all saying about them. 
and the only reason why I didn't do that is because it's like, you know what? I'm not even about to shit on any African business. I'm not in the business of shitting on African businesses. I'm not doing that. But th I'm making this fucking video because enough is enough. Because she really tried me. Like, she really tried me. I'm not going to take your money. But you're not about to sit here and be that disrespectful and talk about people that's kind and hardworking and coming in there and spending money in your shop and you talking shit like that. The way I blacked on her in French and walked out, like, and y'all hair don't even look good for y'all to be talking that much shit. Didi's in fucking Newark. Like, they really got the night, they got the nicest response from anybody that understood what the fuck they were saying. They got the nicest response. Cause I really could have went in and I didn't. And I, it's just so frustrating because it's like, that's why people be coming in, come up in the no shop, come up in no, ugh, I'm just, y'all. That's why people be coming in these African hair braiding shops and turning the fuck up on y'all. And then y'all try to play victim and innocent like you don't understand why they're doing this. And don't get me wrong, I've been to African hair braiding shops that they're like, oh, we're just gonna do, look, like, we're gonna do what she's asking, like, without charge. Like, that's fine. Her hair's gonna look nice. Like, and they're cool and they're common and they're nice people. And it's like, those are the people that deserve the businesses because you're not making money without American women. You're not making money. You know what's up. Like, if it's not for the American woman that's coming in your shop, you're not making money. So stop talking shit. You don't know who understands. You don't know who speaks your language. Like, they was in there, Nangadef. I can understand that. Okay? I understand, I understand it. And I understand every dialect of shit y'all fucking talking. Stop. Stop doing that shit. 